And welcome back to News Desk. Thank you very much for staying with us. Now, we'll be getting shortly to our panel discussion, but before then, they say a day in politics is uh, such a long time. Well, today we can say a night in politics was one long one, full of intrigues, confusion, and suspense. It is a night that uh, has seen some major upsets, as early results indicated that vocal game member of parliament, Jakoyo Midio, has lost to his bitter rival, Elisha Odiambo. Even more controversial was the award of the ODM nomination certificates to both Kisumu gubernatorial aspirants Anyang Nyongo and Jack Ranguma. Zinzi Kibiku has more from the political intrigues of the night. Take a look. In Kisumu County, there was confusion earlier as both Jack Ranguma and Anyang Nyongo were both declared winners for ODM gubernatorial ticket at different telling centers. This was after Senator Anyang Nyongo had been projected as the winning candidate with 164,110 votes against Ranguma's 91,480. I'm looking forward to the National Election Board First of all, taking stern action against Professor Yang Nyong and Governor Jack Anguma for what they have done. And then secondly, looking closely into how we can actually strengthen the party to ensure that this kind of act of evils do not happen. As night continued to fall, drama did not miss out in Wasingishu. Residents continue to make long queues in hopes of practicing their voting rights. However, as the night dragged on, many of them were barred from accessing the polling centers, denying residents a chance to cast their votes. We are very disappointed. Anyway, President Uru Kinyata Lituambia, they didn't expect this. But we are abiding Nayaye, Tunakubalia Nayaye. Lakini, to make up a muda murefu sana zaini za inelekeza tano. Tukutuwa hapa na laini isongi. But, tangu sa kumna moja. Maji tu. Maji peke yake ndo tumekunywa. Maji peke yake. Mimi nimefika hapa sa kumi ya subuhi. Yes. Na panga laini kufika pale kwa mulango. Na fukusa na mapolizi. Na uliza kazi ya tuja tuambia sa moja sharp. Tumepika kura. Sa hata kuna kura tumepika. Sure. Paka sa hizi ya kuna. Shida nukupikuwa pale kwa mulango. Lakini we have our own rights. We should have to vote somebody in and elect somebody in. Na tutufute mutu kasi, tuandike mutu kasi leo. Ata kama ni saa saba ya usiku, ata kama ni asubui, lasima tupige kura. Mimi lasima nipige kura kwa sababu nimetoka kwa nyumba yangu, nikambia bibi yangu na familia yangu kwa kama naenda kupiga ku. Naenda kuandika mutu kasi, na nifute mutu kasi. Saasa kama muda nitajia kwa kama itafika mahali wa sema kwa kama makatasi imeisha, tutaenda tukutubilikete makatasi, na tukutukua na makatasi inafu, but I'm tired of all these. It was perceived to be a titanic duo in Kiambu. Incumbent Governor William Kabogo facing off with Ferdinand Waititu, also known as Baba Yao for the governor's seat. Just as results began to trickle in, Kabogo came out, besieged, crying wolf, but not keeping his next move close to his chest. It's been a long journey in, 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 in uh, Jubilee. I've done my best. But since it seems like there are huge powers that need to keep me away, I'm saying for now I am doing what it is that that memorandum said. I don't agree with his nominations. Last night we got Ferdinand Waititu, who probably will be the next governor of, of this great county. And I wish him very well because this is a very, very, very serious job. In Kitui, another fiasco of the wiper primaries. Results are yet to be received three days after voters cast their ballots. Uncertainty under the wiper nominations continues to cloud the outcome. Wiper chairman David Musila is hoping to unseat the incumbent governor, Julius Malombe. I am not considering the seat. In fact, even by, my, even by the announced figures, the, the figures the guy read line by line, I am still ahead by 1,000 votes. But if I go by my own figures, out of uh, 72 polling stations uh, whose results I have, I, you know, I, I am ahead by, by, by over 4,000 votes. And in Siaya, the 2013 rivalry between Jakoyo Mediwo and Elisha Odhiambo was rekindled as Mediwo contested early results, which indicated that he had lost the nomination for the GEM parliamentary seat. 
Zinzi Kibiku, KTN News. All right, so that is uh, what transpires in the night. So that and in the night, that's where everything goes down, downhill sometimes for some people. All right, so we want now to link up uh, with uh, my colleague Akisa Wandera before we come to the studio discussion uh, to talk to us. Uh, he, she is joining us from Miango, I understand. Akisa, thank you very much for joining us. So talk to us about the process that you've been covering so far. You've visited quite a number of polling stations. What have you been able to assess uh, from uh, where you sit? Well, Betty, you see, it was an, a very long night in uh, politics, of course, uh, especially for the biggest losers, but it continues to be a big day as uh, we traverse uh, the Embakasi constituency. When I say Embakasi constituency, I talk about the bigger picture, Embakasi East, Embakasi West, Embakasi North, and Embakasi South. Early in the morning, we were in Embakasi West, uh, specifically in Omoja 1, where there were problems uh, with the um, register to use. Should they be using the Jubilee Party register or the IABC register? And uh, there was a standoff, and all aspirants were saying, we will tell our supporters not to vote if this goes on. But by the time we were leaving the place, everything had been settled, and uh, they were back to voting. And we made way here at Embakasi East, where seven aspirants are going head-to-head -head for the position of uh, Member of Parliament for Embakasi East. Something very interesting to note for Embakasi East, among all the uh, researchers and polls that have been released on Nairobi politics and members of Parliament, uh, the Member of Parliament for Embakasi East comes to the bottom when it comes to the dormant members of parliament who are not very vocal in, um, in, in politics and according to an InfoTrack research that was released in March this year, uh, the member of parliament here, John Ogut, was among those who are well perceived to be on their way out if those who are aspiring to take up their positions, of course, pull off their socks. And probably why it has attracted a huge number of seven aspirants to vie for the position of a member of parliament in this particular constituency, the second largest after Langata, where 11 aspirants are uh, vying to become MP for Langata. But the process here so far, what I can report is the process is running smooth. Um, a number of people uh, sounding disorderly, quite uh, the opposite of what we witnessed in the morning in Umoja 1. I have just taken a look at the amount of time everyone is using to just cast their ballot. It takes less than four minutes uh, here, or even less, like say two minutes or three minutes. And uh, there seems to be a state of calmness among the voters who've turned up here in Mihango Primary, which is one of the wards in Embakasi East constituency. I'll just be speaking to a number of the voters here to just take a look at uh, how they feel about the whole process. Abariyako? Mzuri, mzuri, kabisa. Unaitu, unaitu, nani na unasikiaja kuhusu shugli ya leo? Mii naitu uh, Victor Duar Okota. Mm, shugli ya leo inaenda vizuri. Naona iko very peaceful. The process is very smooth. Na ni hivo, nataki yandelea tu hivo hivo paka jioni. Wenzenu kwa hizo wazingine wamekua kilalamika kuhusu register ambayo inatumiwa hapa mkosawa kabisa? Hapa tu kosawa kabisa, sijaona kama kuna shida yote. Mbile, eh, mina una process, itaenda smooth kabisa. Right. Victor, thank you very much. Let's speak to some more to just get an understanding of how they feel about this whole process. I want to speak to a woman. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Just give us your names and how you feel about the process. Uh, I'm Susan Oerimo. Na sioni kiendelea vibaya. Sijakuja hapa kwa muda mrefu na nimepata nafasi niko karibu kuingia ku vote. Na pia naona amani iko. Naona inaendelea vizuri. Ulikuja hapa saa ngapi? Nimekuja kitu saa tano na nusu. Yeah. All right, Betty, I will have to disrupt it at that. Apparently, some drama is uh, unfolding here. We understand that some ballot papers have just, or uh, some ballot boxes have been found. We'll be confirming that to you as we rush to the scene to see whether indeed it's true that some uh, a car with the ballot boxes uh, have been nabbed, uh, stuffed with ballot papers. But, Betty, I'll come back to you even as we rush to the scene to see whether we can ascertain to these claims. We'll uh, 
wait for you to really confirm what is happening. I can see people running there, Helter Skelter. We'll be getting back to Akisa on there to talk to us about the developments there. Coming back to the studio, uh, let me reintroduce my guests who have been with me. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Alex Gatundu, we also have Billy Mijungu and uh, Franklin Mukwanja. Thank you very much for your time. All right, so one of the issues that I want us to discuss is the issues of the list. And uh, Mukwanja, I'd like you to comment about that. Why are we having all these differences uh, with uh, the party list or the IEBC list? There's so many lists. All right, very interesting scenes we're also seeing uh, in Mihango, where Akisa Wandera is. And uh, we'll try and ascertain what is happening. She had mentioned that there were ballot boxes which were found in a car that has just drove into one of the polling stations. And therefore, we'll be waiting to just hear if this is indeed true. All right, as you can see, there are people who have been apprehended there by uh, police and we'll be getting to understand why that is happening. Akisa, if you can hear me, what exactly is happening? Have you confirmed? I'm sure it's, it's just a few seconds ago we were speaking, but have you been able to ascertain what is happening? Well, uh, Betty, I will be unable to come onto the screen, but I will be speaking as we show you the live footage of what really is happening here in Mihango. We are still have still been unable to ascertain, but we understand the four that you're seeing on the ground mm. have uh, just uh, been arrested after they were nabbed with ballot boxes. We are yet to see the ballot boxes, so I would not really confirm from where I am. We would want to speak to the police, but currently they were a bit hostile about us recording this, but... Betty, we will be taking a look at what's happening. But it's good to point out that earlier on, even before we came on live, one of the people who are very closest to, a ma uh, to one of the aspirants who's running uh, made claims that uh, there was uh, a plans on rigging in one of the polling stations that we were planning to go from where we are now. So it could be all connected. But Betty, we will be coming to you with more information as soon as we are certain. But we've shown you uh, footage of the four suspects who've just been arrested here at Mihango Primary, we understand they have been intercepted by the police with ballot boxes and stuffed ballot papers. But Betty, just give us time to ascertain this and we will come back to you once we have the whole information. Thank you very much. We'll let you do that, Akisa Wandera. All right, coming back to the question about the, the, the party register, um, what is your take on this issue to do with which register should be used? Shouldn't it be very clear that you know it's a party list and if that's not available, the IBC list comes to play? Yep, I think um, the party list is a straightforward matter. And uh, just quickly on what we're seeing uh, yes, on come the, out on in this, Mihalo. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the energy and I like the, the, the way people, the citizen participation mm -hmm. in these uh, party primaries. This is the record turnout. We're seeing an average of 45 to 55% of voter turnout. Yeah. Initially, we've had uh, just 20, you know, at most 30%. And, and this shows one thing. Kenyans are determined not to be shortchanged anymore. As I said earlier from the, at the beginning of the show, yeah. the Kenyans have been yearning for change, mm -hmm. but now they want to really demonstrate that change that they're looking out mm -hmm. for, and, and they're becoming that change. Having said that, the issue of uh, you know, the, the register to be used yeah. is a straightforward matter. Because one, the law is very clear mm -hmm. that whatever is to be used in the party primaries is the party register of members. The party has the responsibility to enlist members, and they have been doing it for ages. Mm -hmm. The custodian of this register is the registrar of political parties, who, should, who has the only mandate in law to authenticate that this is a genuine register mm -hmm. for a particular political party, because then you cannot be a, a double member or a triple member. And the only way to authenticate that mm -hmm. and give that this party is authentic for party A mm -hmm. is the register of political parties. So there has been calculated failure at the political party level. Mm -hmm. And then there has been a sheer incompetence. Mm -hmm. uh, again, 
instigated by the political parties and elected members, particularly of the National Assembly, yeah. uh, on both aisles, on, on both sides of the parliament, because uh, of, of, of the floor of the parliament, because there has not been a deliberate attempt mm -hmm. to streamline the operations of the Office of the Register of Political Parties. Yeah. I suppose because uh, the current office holders could be serving and, and making things a little bit easy for mm -hmm. each Do Tom, Dick, and Harry, yes, yes. who is in the political uh, you know, uh, arena. And even the, on Sunday last week, the IEBC chair, uh, Wafula Jabukati, was clear that the register to be used in party primaries is the party register. Mm -hmm. If the parties want some help, then they can borrow uh, from the wisdom of the, you know, uh, 2013 voters register, mm, okay. uh, which because he said the IEBC register for 2017 is not ready, is still undergoing, yes. you know, a forensic audit. And these are clear issues. But why do we have this struggle? The issue for Jubilee, for instance, there is an amalgamation of about 10 political parties. Now, the question is, have they really um, taken into account all the members of these political parties that they folded up to mm -hmm. form Jubilee? Mm -hmm. It's a question that people need to be answered. Number two is they conducted an elaborate digital registration of members. Yes. Yes, they have said they will not use the cards, mm -hmm. but have those individuals that uh, bought these cards and uh, became members enlisted, uh, are they part of the register now? Mm -hmm. And, and have they integrated all these registers so that you can be sure that yes, uh, as much as uh, the other members who are for, the other parties were folded up, all these bona fide members in those individual parties are now bona fide Jubilee members. And again, Jubilee went out to mm. register party members, and uh, as much as they are not using the card to identify them, yes, that yes. register is available. available. And, and, and it becomes very obvious that uh, the controversy around the voter register, then it's not by default, mm. it is by design. And that is why you're seeing members like uh, you know incidents like the, the ones you're seeing in mehango now that uh, people have access to ballot boxes and incidents like in uh, migori and kisumu in, in gori kisumu where people declare themselves uh, you mm. know as, as, winners. as winners and i would want to know because we have one set of results in uh, Migori, yeah. where there was a Koto Bado and uh, given a certificate, and then in Kisumu again, where did the uh, Uchilo Ayako get the numbers used to declare himself? Where did the uh, uh, Ranguma get the numbers, the numbers used to declare himself? Okay. And then party institutionalization. When you have a county elections panel in, in the instance of ODM, and then you have the National Elections Board. Don't you have officers that have presided over this election that they only like in the Kenyan law right. that you cannot declare yourself a winner? a winner? Why is it happening in the past? Why is it happening? All right, we'll get to Alex uh, and, and your view. But for now, though, let's go back to Akisa Wandera. She uh, hopefully has some information. Akisa, do you have any more information about uh, what we just witnessed on our screens a few moments ago? Well, yeah, Betty, as Alia mentioned, we didn't really have the right information on why exactly the four had been apprehended, but we've spoken uh, to one of those who are conducting this particular operation. And just a clarification, they say that it has nothing to do with electoral malpractice. It, ha it is about the gangs that uh, you have seen on the news in Kayole, and they're suspected to be... Uh, part of the members of a particular gang in Kayole that has been wreaking havoc in this particular area as well as Kayole. The heads of operation or those who have uh, intercepted them say that it has has nothing to do with uh, ballot paper stuffing or ballot boxes stealing, nothing to do with electoral malpractice. It's just that they happened. Uh, this particular arrest was uh, happened to be outside a polling station during a voting process. But I will just uh, move uh, out a bit for you to just take a look at uh, those who have been apprehended there by police officers. Not anything to do with electoral malpractice, nothing to do with the stuffing on, of ballot papers, nothing to do with uh, the stealing of ba ballot boxes, but uh, the officers here tell us that they're just apprehending them to confirm whether indeed they are members of a particular gang in Kayole or not, and once they ascertain that they are not, they will be free to go, but if they are, of course, the law will, will take its course. This has happened while we were giving you an update on the electoral process or the voting process in the Jubilee primaries here in Mihango. And a lot of residents have just come out to see what exactly is happening. I, voting hasn't been disrupted, but most people ran out of their queues to just come out here and see what exactly is happening. Betty.
Sawandera for that clarification. So it's not anything to do with the uh, primaries, but it has everything to do with uh, crime. And we'll be getting to, of course, follow up on that very critical uh, development that you just mentioned for us. Akisa, thank you for that. All right, coming to the studio. Alex, you had something to add on to yes. what Franklin has just talked about. Yes, the, uh, the issue, I would like first to disagree with him to some, to some extent. Mm -hmm. The issue of uh, voter register is a dicey and delicate one. And it's not as simple as uh, one would uh, want to imagine. Mm -hmm. If it has never been easy for IBC, IBC. and the other pre preceding uh, polling body in Kenya, it can never be easy for political parties. So to some extent, I, I, I would like to, to understand the predicament and the complications that uh, the, the Jubilee party is undergoing. And in any event, if you compare them with the others, they, I think they are, they, they are doing better in terms of organization, in terms of peace and security of the areas that uh, they are conducting the, the nominations. Secondly, most important of all, remember that when members are enlisting to be uh, to, 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 to join political parties mm. the the rule has always been you can register as a m member of a political party anywhere for example if you go to my good place Nyeri, mm -hmm. you can uh, register there but when it comes to voting as a member that is but when it comes to voting you can only vote where you are registered as a, a, a other ibc okay. so that brings a complication so if, for example, I registered as a, as a member of Jubri Party in Nyeri, but when it comes to nomination, I, I can only vote where I am registered as, as, a, as a member of IBC because that is where ordinarily I reside and I would like to vote. Mm. So I think that is, the, that is what the, the, the party is grappling with, that we have, a, we have very many voters there, out, out there. They have not been registered in where, in, 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 as members of the political party mm. at the place where they are, they are, they are casting their vote. 2013 register is the one that is being used by, yes, yes by IEBC, by, 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 by Jubilee Party. Now, what does that mean? It means you have to lock out everyone who registered after IEBC locked mm. the register in 2013. So everyone else who was registered uh, later and who took up their uh, ID later, then they, are, they cannot be allowed to vote. Is that really good for, for our country? It's not so, good. So, so what impact will it have then? It, it, is, it, it, it is very unfortunate. That's why initially at the entry point, uh, Betty, I said that it is important that IBC be the ones to be managing uh, all no, 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 nominations subject to payment of their fees and subject to them invoicing all the political players depending on their strength in parliament. Uh, you see, if they have the structures, they have the infrastructure, they even have the backbone, polling backbone. So for them, they can take, we can take advantage of even the training that their staff undergo. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are very good in, in some of these matters that uh, these party parties are grappling with. They, have, they know how to handle crowd. They know how to handle issues of darkness. When, when there are emergencies, they know how to handle. But when it comes to political parties, yeah, you are dealing with thugs who have vested interest. Depending. And that's why you can see some of these people. You have an issue where one, we have two certificates, and they are issued by two returning officers. One would have expected that yeah. a party should, be, should have a very clear rule. Who is supposed to process an issue? Okay. Yes. All right. Interesting. Billy, I'd like, yeah, yeah. You, you want to say something? I, I wanted to come in. I mean, I'm an enthusiast of the Labour Party of the UK, mm -hmm. and uh, they have 587,000 mm -hmm. members of the political party. These are parties that have been built over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Liberal Democrats have uh, a membership of 90. They just gained 1,000, 2,000 within an hour or so when they announced their elections the other day. Yeah. I'm talking about political parties that have been built for years. Now, let's come to Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, in my own area, Migori County, the political party called ODM there has, which would normally have the membership that it requires, has less than 10,000 members. Uh, I had Jacoyo Midu complaining that uh, uh, only 7,000 existed in CIA. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to talk even about Nairobi. Now, the voters in Migori who voted the governor were 110,000. Mm. And the ones who voted uh, uh, the challenger uh, were about 59,000. But remember, the political parties act and the political party list that should have been used has less than 10,000 or about 10,000. So it means even participation 
to get those guys uh, voted in, it's already an illegality. So we, we are, I don't think we are solving any problem. Actually, those who should have participated were about 10,000, mm. but we have hundreds of people participating. Now, this is happening, happening uh, across, across the board. Course. If somebody would go to court, all these political primaries will be easily uh, be an analogy. Okay. So for me, I'm comfortable because out of 10,000 in Gori, I have about 200 independent voters. <laughs> <laughs> 200 independent 200, voters? 200,000, I mean. 200,000. Yeah, independent voters. <laughs> Those are the people yeah. you're looking so at. So actually, that tells you the dilemma we have in terms of managing political parties. Mm. Truly and honestly, we do not have political parties. We do not have a network within political parties. Mm. Uh, I wish the, f the space was just free. Uh, people go and uh, to IEBC, IEBC conducts the elections, mm. uh, then after that people can join their political parties. I think that would be an easier persuasion. But is that even possible? I mean, looking at the um, IEBC right now as it is, right? do you think right now they're even in a situation where they can even handle even one, uh, you know, party's uh, primaries? I think, uh, Betty, we must underscore uh, the fact that uh, we are a multi-party uh, democracy. And you cannot call yourself a multi-party democratic state without functional mm. uh, democratic political parties. And for a long time, um, other than the challenges of the rule of law and the need for public participation in decision making, uh, the other pillars and, and the weakest link in uh, developing our democracy mm -hmm. as a country has been the issue of party organization and management into political institutions that can be able to progress our, you know, and, and mature our democracy. So political parties have majorly been the weakest link mm -hmm. in uh, the chain of our democratic development. And, and unless we emphasize this, because we have uh, the right, in my, in, in my fair opinion, we have a, a, a fair, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a legal and policy framework to establish democratic political parties. Yeah. What we are lacking in is we have a very weak um, and, and stained fabric when it comes to philosophies, ideals, values, uh, to be able to, you know, uh, establish strong political parties. And our politics has all along been mobilized along ethnic bands, which we need to speak candidly about. Mm. Because un un unless we continue and speak about it and establish strong political parties, then uh, this issue of being a, a multi-party democratic state will remain a mirage, okay. which, which is not a good thing for us. So okay. saying that we push all this uh, challenge to the independent, uh, you know, the electoral elections management body to have all uh, the Tom, Dick and Harry's, you know, subject themselves uh, to the IBC mm. and the voters. I mean, we'll have a ballot paper for MCS, mm. Uh, mm. like the standard paper today, where you have, uh, we, in, in my own ward in uh, Nabiswa, a ward in the uh, community constituency of Transoya County, mm. you, we have on one party, like Ford Kenya, there are about 17, mm -hmm. uh, you know, aspirants. And you're asking IBC, for instance, to arbitrate, you know, to have a ballot paper, just one party is 17, then you'll have each party at the primary, at, at, at the election, having each, its own ballot paper. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's quite a lot of work. We have okay. these two, they are traditions established. Okay. They, we have a proper uh, legal policy framework that we can mature over time. Okay. And the weakest link, and we have, we have to be bored about this, the middle class in this country that he described, the middle class, the upper middle class, um, some of them seated here, uh, must, be, must join political okay. parties and grow them, and grow become them. members, take positions in the parties, and not run, away from, and not run away from this And not run away from Yeah, the middle class, I mean, <laughs> they should. We have, to <laughs> we have to wind up. Thank you yeah. very much, uh, yeah. gentlemen, for your time. We have Alex Gatundu, he's an advocate of the High Court, and also a political commentator, Billy Mijungu, who's also a political commentator and an independent aspirant. Uh, for the senatorial position in Migori. All the best. <laughs> and we also have Franklin Mukwanja, um, also a political commentator. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. All right, so that's how we wrap up things here on uh, News Desk. It has been an extended version of everything, and we appreciate your company as we, of course, uh, take stock of what's happening throughout the country on the political front and indeed in regards to the party primaries. My name is Bessie Kialo. 
We'll do this again tomorrow. Thank you very much for staying with us. My colleague Gabby again is coming up shortly with uh, the day's business, but also a bit more of uh, the politics that we've been highlighting for the better part of the morning. Goodbye. See you tomorrow.